All right. Um, so yeah, we're back at the content I usually like to cover, which is uh, new units and new stuff. Um, so let's kind of take a look at what's coming later today. Uh, there's a few things I was going to mention about uh, why I haven't made uh, videos in a while. Um, and I'll, but I'll, that'll be at the end um, for anybody who cares, because I imagine not a whole lot of people will actually care <laughs> whether why I'm what's going on with me in the real world. So <clears throat> like like I said, that'll be at the end. For now, we'll focus on this, and we'll see where um, what's E7 got in store for us. Uh, doesn't need to be so loud. Uh, new hero, new hero, summer break, Charlotte. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, I guess we're getting summer Charlotte, which is pretty. I don't know. Uh, Light Charlotte's kind of fallen off just because um, there's so many good dark one shotters. Like uh, A Ravi just dumpsters her. Um, who else? And she can't really kill A Ravi either. Like it doesn't like. Yeah, <clears throat> she can't really kill A Ravi with a one shot. Usually now um, you've got things like um, you know Riolu's running around, all kinds of stuff in general. She's she's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just that at least from my using her, it's like hard to get her to do anything. Um, useful fire charlotte has kind of fallen off a little bit just because there's so many people out there like counterattacking. like you've got things like bellion and ram and um, a bunch of other stuff just hampering that but against grass fire charlotte's still like insane like if you have two grass units on your team on accident if you accidentally choose two grass units like they're just going to choose charlotte and go to town um <clears throat> this new one we'll see what that is um we'll just skip over the side story stuff so Memories, World Arena, World Arena, okay. Does this go over her kit here? Artifact, we'll just take a look at the artifact here. Um, increases effectiveness, wait, what is she again? <clears throat> uh, Grass Soul Weaver, um, interesting. So she's gonna be a, presumably a regular unit and fire Charlotte or the new Charlotte's gonna be a limited unit or something like that increases effectiveness by 30 after using base a basic skill increases combat readiness of all allies except for the caster of the ally except for the caster okay so she boosts to one hero within the team so every time she basic attacks she boosts someone up by 10 percent um that's not too bad, but that's basically what, um, what's her name? That's the, one of the artifacts that, uh, DN got. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, running this on DN sounds like a lot of fun, especially with like the counter set that I have her on, but then it removes her healing. So it's 50, 50, but <clears throat> we'll see who this could be useful on. I don't know. Uh, this will probably be most useful on like, uh, a lot of the, the ML five star heroes. Or not not five star specifically, but a lot of the ML um, Moonlight Soul Weavers. Presumably, it's a yeah, it's a Soul Weaver artifact. So a lot of the Moonlight Soul Weavers because a lot of them have like S two passive, so they'll do their S three, and then for the rest of the game they're just S one ing, right? So this could be useful there. But yeah, uh, do we get her skills and everything? We do not. So Summer Charlotte, Is Summer Charlotte, just the skin. New limited summer hero starting the 28th, so next week she's coming. Preview on the 27th, so we won't know what skills she has until then. <clears throat> World Arena Conquest season. After maintenance, yep. So the question is basically just do you want to save your bookmarks for her? You want to pull. You want to pull on this new unit or save for the limited unit. Which, theoretically, you kind of always want to save for the limited unit. But this new unit could be good. I mean, if it was between like, it depends on the limited unit, right? Like, it'd be a hard choice if it was like fire. If it was new Charlotte versus Hua Young, who is just a basic, you know, RGB five star, that would be a hard choice. But we'll have to see how good this uh, this lady is. If she is as good as um, Hua Young uh, for her respective role, then I mean, it might be a tough position to be in. But generally, you want to pull for limited units. But I just want to make sure people know there's always exceptions to those things. Um, we're getting Sage Balls uh, and Closer Charles, Closet Charles. 
that's not too bad. I have been having a lot of fun with Sage Ball lately, um, so if you want to pull for him, by all means. Um, but I probably wouldn't spend coins on either of these. Like if I didn't have Sage Ball, I wouldn't spend those coins to get Sage Ball. I'm still just waiting for um, ML uh, ML Shermia to show up here, and then obviously we got the, the the showcase here that she's coming next rotation, which came a lot close came a lot sooner than I thought it would. But you know whatever. Uh, I still don't have enough to pull to pity for her, but. I'm sure I will by the time that's over. Uh, and then here's the password for the interview. Uh, hold on. I should go put that in right now at some point. But uh, So here we go. We're looking at the um, the new unit. Let's see what she does. Okay, so S3, passive S2. So again, this is pretty good for her because I'm imagining she'll just dump her S1 and then just S2. Uh, health, X, imprint... What is this? Uh, so she gives out health. Where is the stats? Okay. And she gives herself effectiveness. Right now she's reminding me... Because her artifact in this probably means she has debuffs, which kind of reminds me of that girl that we got with the... Um, who was she a part of? I think she was part of the, uh, the RE0 collab that one fire healer that we have that like averages out everyone's health and does sleep and stuff um she kind of reminds me of that but we'll see she's, high effectiveness. she's grass so skill two at the end of an enemy's turn for each buff granted to the enemy has a five percent chance to increase combat readiness of the caster by 20 percent okay okay that's interesting um so when it's her so whenever it's an enemy's turn for every buff they have 5% chance so if they have that's actually not that high but given like if she's on defense right you know this is going to proc 100% of the time right because it's a 5% chance to get the full 20% right uh, every time your turn in so imagine fighting against her and like we all know how stats kind of shift in the defense's favor um, especially when you're playing arena or guild wars uh, they, they, they kind of shift in the defense's favor so this 5% like per buff right if everybody has one buff on your team that's only 25 percent chance but you already know that she's going to proc this every time so every time one of your team one of your teammates goes she's going to get another 20 percent she's pretty crazy now on your side using her uh you know it's going to suck using her like this ability is going to suck because you're just not going to get it's never going to proc they're going to have you're going to fight against uh like what ML Calric, and they're each going to have two buffs each at minimum. Some of them are going to have three. But two buffs each at minimum uh, gets you what? One buff each. One buff times four is 20. Yeah, 5% for t four buffs is 20. So 40. So there's a 40% chance to proc this. You're just never going to... It's never going to proc for you. Um, so this is kind of worthless on you know active use. On defense side, it's going to proc all the time. So we'll, we'll see what how useful this is at the end of the turn grants a random buff and a barrier to the ally except for the caster with the highest attack barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's maximum health um let's see attack hit chance crit damage and continuous healing uh this one is useless and this one is not that bad but basically you can just take both of these out and put these in here and just leave these should be better but you got to dilute the pool down um interesting okay so basically you know She's kind of like a healer version of Landy. Like, she gets something the more buffs they have. So if they have buffs, she has a high chance of pushing herself forward at the end of every turn. Um, whenever her turn ends, she just gives a random buff and a barrier to your main attacker, which is... She's here to just be supplemental in that essence so far. Let's move forward. Let's see what this looks like. See, like, against this, like, it's never going to proc for you. But when she's on defense, it will. All right, skill three attacks all enemies, decreasing buff durations by one turn, before inflicting decreased speed and venom for two turns. So this is a new mechanic, theoretically. Um, increases combat readiness of the caster by fifty percent. So there's no healing in this, so presumably her S one heals or something. Um, at the start of the turn, receives damage equivalent to ten percent of max health, and is inflicted with injuries proportional to damage suffered. 
This just seems like poison on steroids. Which I guess that's what Venom theoretically is. I mean, I don't... That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, basically... Uh, uh, what's it called? Poison is 5% per tick. Usually, a lot of times, poisons, I think, come with two. No, poison's just one. So, yeah, it's like 5% per tick, so 10% overall. And it's like true damage. Max health, right? Um, so, this is pretty good. Uh, is it two turns? So, this is a this is theoretically 20% if both ticks proc on this person. 20% um, of the HP just gone. Not to mention it's permanently gone because of the, the injuries. Uh, I, I don't foresee upgrading the damage on this. I don't think she's going to do a lot of damage, but that's just me. Um, yeah, so the fact that she has increased damage here is kind of dumb. Like, it doesn't make any sense because, yeah, I don't know, I'm not going to go into that whole balancing thing. But, yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. You're, probably, you're just going to get here and you're going to be done with it. Um, decrease speed, decrease uh, venom. That's not too bad, especially she she cleanses one buff. Uh, overall, she's looking kind of weird. See what this looks like. That looked kind of interesting. Um, S1. The S1 boosts, if you're running her artifact, theoretically, this is kind of what you want. They want her to run as her own artifact. You're going to boost someone by 10%. You're your max attacker. So, uh, attacks enemies with a 65% chance to inflict venom for one turn. 65, 75% chance. After attacking, when the target is inflicted with Venom, increases skill cooldowns by 1. <laughs> increases effect chance by 100%, to 100%, and inflicts Venom for 2 turns. Oh, it's a 1 turn Venom. Uh, yeah, she's kind of interesting. Let's see. Why did that? Okay, never mind. Uh, artifact, then we just saw the artifact. Um, the artifact gets full effectiveness. Well, okay, it gets full usefulness without leveling it. So if you pull one of this, you're pretty solid. Um, you just get extra effectiveness, which is, I mean, it's like her whole gimmick, but still. I think, is there anything else here? No, that's about it. Let's go back to the S2. I need to see... Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think... Let's go look at her stats again, now that we know what she does. She has high defense. She doesn't scale with health, so you... I mean, you want to build her with some health, but... You probably want to build her on defense to make her tanky. Um, and then... I mean, theoretically, you want her to be as fast as possible. So, effectiveness, health, and defense. Effectiveness, health, defense, and speed. So those are your main four stats, so... Every piece that you pull, you want to have those four substats on it when you throw it on her. Um, yeah, I don't know. I It's hard to gauge exactly if you want to pull for her or pull for the summer unit. But I think at this point, it's safe to say you want to pull for the summer unit. Uh, cause she doesn't do very much more than like what... Um, what's that? Hold on, let me go. I'm going to look for it here. We have her in the... Uh, let's look at the journal. You guys can't see this yet, but I'm going to swap over to it right now. Um, collaboration. What's her name? Her name is Shuna. Shuna and Sharon. They both, they both, they both, they both kind of have similar names. So if we take a look here, let's go over here and swap over to this. Oops, where am I? Here we are. Okay. Uh, so she has uh, dispels two buffs from all enemies with a flooding flower pet petals that has a 75% wait. 50, 60, 70, 80, 85 percent chance to sleep for two turns. Um, this I think is a lot better just because controlling them with sleep is more useful uh, than just giving some extra upgraded poison thing with injuries. Now, is injury bad? Not necessarily, but I mean, I'd rather I'd rather than be asleep than take 10 percent HP damage, right? Like, it's not that big a deal. Uh, not to mention this dispels two buffs. Um, then we've got this here, which dispels two debuffs. Yeah. Two debuffs from your your allies. And the whole health switching thing on this seems kind of like it could be counterintuitive, so I don't know about this. Um, 
Yeah, this this, this skill kind of like I've never I, I don't use her so like I mean the point I'm trying to make is is we're looking at Shauna in comparison, but I don't use Shuna. Um, but this skill just looks like it could be worse in some cases. Um, a barrier for three turns, and then you know big barrier. Okay, and then finally she puts people to sleep with this right. So she heals herself. And that's it. Uh Okay. So yeah, uh theoretically, like I feel like the point I'm bring the point I'm trying to make is that Shuna and Sharon have similar like their high effectiveness um soul weavers who do in Sharon's case, she does less healing and more debuffs, where uh, Sharon, no, in Shuna's case, she does less healing and more debuff stuff, whereas in Sharon's case, she does no healing and only, like, debuff stuff. Um, yeah, let's go take a look at her stats, too. So, she's kind of downgraded a little bit, I think. Um, she has, what? She's slower by one speed, less defense, less health. She's just worse off stat-wise. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The point being that, like, she doesn't do anything that I don't think Shuna does, right? She doesn't do anything better that Shuna doesn't already do. Um, theoretically, Shuna does it better, and we don't see Shuna anywhere, right? So, yeah, I don't know. Just, like, another unit that does enhanced poison like a unit that does enhance poison is like who cares right the only thing that let's go back to again that was just for uh illustrative purposes so let's go back to here uh, the only thing the issue like like i said the s3 is kind of worthless it's like okay venom but who cares the speed decrease is all right but there's better ways to get that on people uh and then the s1 all it does is put venom on one person um, and it increases their skill cooldowns, but I mean, you know, it's not wholly that useful. Um, it's not bad. You can kind of chain someone down if you if you if you leave this, but people are running a lot of immunity, and they can uh, reapply it and and not worry about that stuff. Um, not everybody's running immunity, mind you, but a lot of people, like their main people that need it, are running immunity. Um, let's go back to where am I looking at here? But yeah, like I said, her main thing is going to be this S two, where it's like. She's here to support whoever uh, is the highest attack person. Like, they're just going to keep getting buffs and barriers for free. As long as Sharoon is, is alive, um, increased portion of the caster's max health. So, yeah, and then not only that, like, you have to actually build... I was going to say, not you don't want to dump everything into defense, but you want to, like, put a lot of stuff into defense. Like, if you're running health necklace, health ring, and, like, health boot or, or speed... I mean, you're usually running speed boot, but let's say you're running health necklace and health ring... Um, with Sharon, because she has high defense, you probably want to run one of those to be defense percentage. But the fact that her barrier, which is like the only thing that she provides to like the team overall, scales with her um, health means you kind of want to like. It's hard. It's not easy. Like this should have scaled with defense. And that would have been a lot better, but it did. It doesn't. So um, yeah, I don't know. I like I said, I'm not the best at this game, but I don't think I don't really see her having a place here. Like I said, Enhanced Poison is still, at the end of the day, Enhanced Poison, and nobody uses Poison other than, like, uh, Abyss or something like that. Maybe if you make her super fast and, like, just pure debuffing, she'll be insane in the Abyss. Like, having... Because the thing with the Abyss, it, it takes longer because all the Poisons are 5%, and then they have to they have two ticks, so that's 10% overall. If here all your Venoms are 10% and they have two ticks, that's 20% overall, and she could just keep applying it with her S1 and her S3. Um, so maybe that's where she is, but I wouldn't pull a unit just to, you know, do, uh, Abyss slightly better than you were already doing it. Um, but that's just me. I don't know. Like her, her, I'm, and I'm also not sure why she's a soul weaver. I'm not sure what she gains from being a soul weaver in terms of artifacts. So let's go look at, uh, again, let's bring this back up. Did I even switch over? Yeah, I switched over. Okay. Uh, I don't have two monitors like I usually do, so this is a little more dumb. Yeah, I'm like, this probably should have ended a while ago, right, in terms of, like, analyzing this unit. But I'm trying to see, like, who made this unit and, like, for what purpose. Um, 
Celestine gives her healing ability, but she's dumping healing so hard that I don't think she cares. Um, Doctor's bag doesn't look too bad. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't really play to her strengths. Effect resistance here. Increases effectiveness at the end of the caster's turn, and then this is there's this one here, which gives her effectiveness at the end of the at the end of her turn. But like, who cares? Um, you, you know, like stacking up, building, building um, a bunch of effectiveness on her after the fact is kind of dumb. Uh, this is you know healing again. This she gets hit whatever, but she's not gonna get hit that often because no one really cares. Uh, healing. Uh, well, this is cleansing. This is healing. Healing. Uh, healing, more healing. Yeah, no. Let's see what is this one. Does. I forgot this one does. Increase combat risk of the caster. Put him with the ally. Of the debuff. The end of this. Ah, that's all right. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, it's a really weird setup. I think. Um, I'm not sure why she's a soul weaver. She can't really benefit from any of this stuff. And she damages people. So like, you would think something like maybe abyssal crown would be nice on her because you strip one AOE, hit them with the with the venom, and then you can stun them possibly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a strange situation. Like, this one could be pretty interesting on her, right? So she has a 14% chance, plus the 5 every unit has at base, so she's got, like, nearly a 20% chance. So 1 in 5, um, one in five attacks are going to give her a dual attack. Um, and then when it's not her turn, she gets effectiveness, and she gets the, the Venom plus the... What's it called? Plus the, the skill cooldown reset or something like that, right? So, like I said, I don't know why she's a Soul Weaver. She doesn't benefit from any Soul Weaver artifacts. Like, she benefits from them so little, they had to, like, mangle a new artifact that basically is useless on every other Soul Weaver just to have it be useful slightly on her. I don't know. It just seems wasteful and worthless. Like I said, it's... Sometimes when characters are clear cut and dry like it's it's boring right it's like oh this look this guy looks pretty good and then we move on but when characters are this mind-bogglingly like poorly designed it's like you, there's a lot to talk about um but i don't know like i said she could be good i guess i don't i just don't foresee her doing anything useful so personally if you ask me i'm just going to save my bookmarks until um we, uh summer charlotte comes out and then pull for her um yeah let's see what else is there uh yeah i think that was mainly it if here's the code again, uh, like I said, at the end, now, at the, now we're at the end of the video. Um, yeah, I've been packing some stuff, so I'm probably going to move somewhere. So that's why I haven't made videos um, in a while. And I'm probably, this is going to be the last video for a while before I start making videos again. Um, and like I said, since this channel, a lot of the stuff with Epic 7 and it used to be Fire Emblem uh, was kind of like just to get in the motion of making videos like... Go in there, record yourself, get used to all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep making Epic 7 videos. It's going to be hard to stop just because I'm going to be playing it still. Um, and there's always stuff I want to talk about. But uh, I'm probably... I don't know if I'm going to stay on, stay doing this. Uh, I have a few series I'm thinking about doing once I move to the new place. Um, but yeah, so again, if anyone is only here for Epic 7 stuff... Uh, just like, like I said, just a heads up. Um, for one, there's going to be a long, uh, decent break before I start making videos again. And when I come back, I'm not necessarily going to focus on Epic 7 as much as I have before. Um, if at all, right? I don't 100% foresee I'm going to stop, like I said, but there's a good chance I could. You know, who knows? No, we never know. Um, so yeah, so like I said, if anybody feels like uh, unsubscribing or, you know, just leaving, that's perfectly all right. And it's obviously encouraged in case. Um, yeah, you just want to. Um, uh, but yeah, so that, that's it for today. Uh, hopefully somebody takes something away from this. I think this one was less informative just because there wasn't really anything in the patch, like in the patch notes or anything. And then there wasn't like the, the unit we got. Again, I don't want to be so mean spirited, but like the unit we got is so obviously just useless that like I don't think anyone needs help figuring out whether to pull on her or not um but that's just me right so yeah take that as you will i think i don't know i have to look at some videos and see if everyone else thinks the same and 
obviously I encourage everyone, like if you're looking at my video, it's probably because you've seen like a few other ones already, right? Because you can just like, you just type Epic 7, you get like a whole flood of videos. Uh, but anyway, the point being that, yeah, just look at other people's videos. If they also say the same thing, it's just probably going to be useless unless there's some kind of secret tech inside of her kit that we're not seeing. But like, like I said, there's easier ways to get speed decrease. Venom isn't wholly useful. The 50% combat readiness increases whatever. Um, it's interesting to see them, I guess as a closing thought, it's interesting to see them release characters like this because either they come out so overtuned they end up being like uh, Hua Young or they come out so undertuned and just nonsensical that like the lapses in logic just collapse in on themselves. You end up with a Sharon who doesn't do anything. Like she's a soul weaver. It's like, oh, okay, well, she's going to do some weird stuff that we don't, she's not going to heal, right? But it's like, okay, she's not going to heal, but what is she going to do? Nothing, basically, right? So keep that in mind. Like I said, um, right now having buffs, maybe this, let's see. Okay, I was thinking maybe something about this Venom buff. Because if we look here, right, let's take a look here. She put it on them. It has like that, no, no, it's about, that's normal, never mind. I was just thinking maybe like the Venom buff is exclusive to her and like you can't clear the Venom or something. Because that, that'd probably be the only way it would give her a chance. But as it is now, like I said, it's just upgraded poison. And no one uses poison because right now we're in a meta where, like, everything cleanses all the time. And, like, all we got to do is just make sure we don't get these things on us, right? Um, that's why fire sucks so much. Because leaving the fire on there, it's just going to get cleansed. But having fire on, like, uh, what's her name? Carrot or uh, Araminta, they can pop those burns. And there you go. You don't have to worry about them being like uh, uh, cleared or anything. You don't have to worry about them being um, removed, right? Cleansed, because uh, you can just pop them. So that's kind of what the point of that. Like any, a lot of the like bleed isn't useful for the same reason, because it's like oh, I got a bunch of bleeds on him, uh, but yeah, then he just cleansed them all. And now he's back to normal, right? So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I look forward to seeing what Summer Charlotte does. Uh, the reason I brought up light charlotte and fire charlotte as comparisons were just because like thinking about who i'm going to put uh my my charlotte merges into if i get any i don't have any currently but if i get any more charlottes um do i put them into ml charlotte fire charlotte and like i said ml charlotte's kind of fallen off for me a bit in fire charlotte while it isn't falling off i don't have gear for her and she's very grass focused like she's here to dumpster grass specifically violet i think for me, I don't know. I, I usually, I've used her to kill Violets, but Violets kind of fallen out a little bit, especially with the, like, it's hard to justify spending money on getting gear or, like, resources, not money, money, but, like, you know, gold and just, like, all kinds of materials to get better gear for Fire Charlotte when Hua Young just does, like, the same thing better, right? Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, like I said, look forward to seeing those new units. Uh, this unit kind of confuses me in terms of, like, how abysmally bad it is, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time.